Hi, this is Dave from Notes and Volts, and welcome to part two of the Twitch Switch build. In this episode, we'll complete the construction on this project by installing the buttons and wiring them to the microcontroller board. As always, I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters for making this project possible. All right, let's get started. In part one of the video, we drilled out our Hammond aluminum enclosure and printed and laminated our faceplate graphics. Now we can start putting everything together. The first step is to take the faceplate and place it on the box as close to center as you can. Once it's nice and straight, hold it down with some blue painter's tape. Now grab your X-Acto knife and poke it through the center of the hole. You can then cut around the entire edge of the hole. Now grab a button and place it in the hole, flip the case over and secure it with the washer and nut. You only need to finger tighten it at this point. Now you can use this same technique to cut out the rest of the holes and install the remaining buttons. Once you've finished installing the buttons, flip the case over and align the two pins on the back of each button in the following pattern. Now use a wrench to tighten everything down securely. Now we're ready to add the connecting wires to the buttons. I'm using 22 gauge solid core wire for this project. We'll start by connecting a ground wire to one pin on each button. Here's a pattern you can follow for your wiring. Notice that many of the buttons will have more than one wire connected to each terminal. Don't try to solder them individually. Connect all the wires to the terminal and then solder them in one shot. Also, leave about four inches of wire connected to this terminal. This will connect to our microcontroller board. Here's the video of me actually doing the wiring. Notice how I'm stripping and cutting each piece of wire and then putting it in place before going back and soldering once all the connections are made. Once you finish soldering all your wires, take your wire cutters and cut off the excess. Make sure you clean all the little scraps of wire out of the case. We don't want anything shorting out. The next step is to connect a 4 inch length of wire to the second terminal of each button. This is a lot simpler than doing the ground wiring since there's only one connection on each terminal. Simply cut and strip a 4 inch piece of wire and solder it in place. Once again, take your wire cutters and cut off the excess. As a final step, check each button carefully to make sure that nothing's being shorted out. Now we're ready to connect the buttons to the microcontroller board. Let's remove the orange wires from the diagram to make it more clear. For the brains of this project, I'm using a Teensy LC board. Notice that the holes around the edge of the board are numbered. 
We'll be using the holes on the left side of the board. Use this wiring diagram and simply connect each wire to the same numbered hole on the Teensy board. For example, our ground wire labeled G will go to the G pin on the Teensy board. Now continue on and connect the orange wire from each button to the same numbered hole on the Teensy. To connect the wires to the Teensy, you'll actually bring them up from the back of the board and solder them on the front side of the board. The pads on the Teensy are very small, so you'll want a soldering iron with a sharp tip. Once the wire is soldered, cut the excess off with your wire cutters. Finally, visually inspect the board to make sure there's no solder bridges between the pins. A magnifying glass is helpful here. Here I am actually soldering the board in place. I wear a head mounted magnifier to help me with these sort of things. The Teensy board is really small. Now that we've finished the soldering, we can connect our USB panel mount adapter cable. Bolt the other end to the enclosure using its mounting screws. Now gently push the wires down to make them fit within the enclosure. You'll find that the stiffness of the wires will help to hold everything in place. Here's how it should look when you're finished. Finally, we need to insulate the Teensy board so it doesn't short out against the metal enclosure. An easy solution is to simply cover it in a piece of tape. The last step is to close up the back of the enclosure and stick on some self-adhesive rubber feet. This will prevent it from sliding around on your desktop. Congratulations, you've finished all the construction steps in this project. In the next video, we'll upload the software to make everything work. Until then, visit notesandvolts.com for more projects and tutorials, and I'll see you next time.